Hello, in this video, I want to look on some properties of the cameras inside the view application. And specifically, we're going to look on a depth of field, how we can set this blurring effect, the focus. The reason is why we want to do blurring. Um, even when we look right here and we work with a 3D environment, this actually representation of 3D because our monitors is still 2D. So, and it is abstract 3D is what we're working with. And because we're working with this, we have a few properties how we can simulate a 3D view in 2D environment. And it is, of course, the luminosity, the contrast, the far away, the less contrast it is because observing by the haze. Uh, we also have a saturation decreasing, decreasing in sizes as a reference. And one is another very important, actually. It is the depth of field or blurring. It's a focal focus point. So, for example, if I'm focusing on this triangle right here on this uh, pyramid, in normal world, I don't focus on this back and forward the pyramids. That should be out of focus. That's how our vision works, how we used to do. And of course, you used like in a movies or look in other places. Like right here, see, this is not a great a shot, but it's a good example of showing you blur. You can see object very close to us and it's blur because our focal point is set on the back. And because of that, we can actually see the distance. We can say the object that blur and big because it's a size. Again, remember, it's a size and other ones. It closer to the camera, but most important, our focus set on this fish and chips on the back, not on the person that is up front of the camera. So this is one reason we want to do this. Um, and we can do this multiple ways. Before actually we jump in our camera properties, for your render um, options when you start preview in view, be sure in render settings, you set at least final broadcast or so on. You want to be sure this depth of field options is enabled. We want to be sure it's check in because if you're going with preview, you can notice it's unchecked. So you won't see that depth of field is rendering actually. And depth of field is reference the object closer to the our focal point, our focusing point, how sharp they will be in. And we'll see as we're going to work with this. So let's go ahead be sure we set at least final. It's enabled and we'll go click OK on this. So next, let's see, look on some camera properties. What's happening right here? We select the camera and on the top right, we have an object aspects or object properties for these specific cameras we can work. Uh, you'll notice as camera is selecting, we have this straight line going out of the camera and we have this view, field of view. So, and depending on different application, let's look on this field of view and all this focusing. So what does it mean? Because sometimes we look around and 3D apps may have it a little bit different between each other, how they address this, because some of them will go with the real world camera photography and another ones will go with more um, 3D type uh, a kind of approach to this. The first off, let's look right here. We have a focal um view so in some case we can uh, you can call a field of view in this case and um it is a little bit different from focal link because focal link address two specific lens related to 35 millimeter sensors but on a real world camera your camera can have a crop sensors have it maybe um large sensor full frame 35 millimeters or so on this have a different the sensors and because different size of sensors your focal uh, link can change so the field of view it is um, saying how much your lens can view how much objects are view with uh, um, not related to the sensor so it's almost say hey i have a standard sensor it doesn't really matter in in 3d it doesn't really kind of we can simulate it but it doesn't really matter what you have it sensors because it did take all pixels and calculate it based it on your uh, field of view. So in this case, think of a field of view, it's a open kind of, and in some cases you can uh, relate them to 35 millimeters and a focal link. So in some cases, this, some applications, for example, if we look like on Dust Studio, you'll notice right here in a camera properties, they do using actually the frame width millimeters, 36 millimeters what they're using and focal link 
of the um, lens 65 and also they're using the distance and f-stop aperture in this case what it will be so in some cases we'll say f-stop it will be blur inside the view so or other 3d applications who are using um stand, uh, kind of reference on 3d not less not the camera um also depth of field if you enable it will be taken calculations f stop here and you also notice right here we have our frame width or how what is the sensor size in this case and focal lens of the um lens and for people who are using photography who are using cinematography maybe this one will be easier to understand it's what you're using every day however for some 3d guys um who more come with a cg uh probably the field of view and um all other options will be more um, intuitive and uh, you can easy house i can go between of them but just keep this in mind so right here our field of view it's tell what is degrees we're viewing so we can increase decrease uh, increase the angle so right here you can see our point and this distance between these two lines this is what it represents so if we're going to increase higher you can say see how wider it become and uh, in some relations the depth of field because you have it more absorbed depth of field or blurriness will depend also on the uh, field of view the smaller field of view the more effect you will have it of the blurriness okay so let's go ahead right here we have it our camera we'll set up this is kind of makes sense the next blur it is actually what the blur will apply on the object so it's meaning let me go select put a point and by the way if you need to select this point you can on a camera whatever a command go down to the says switch target so it's select your target you select our point of view and or you can just in some case you can just go ahead select camera and if it's enabled click on this so you can select point of view and I would recommend for you to enable this always visible. We'll look in a second what this does mean focus on and how we can utilize this. But general, just make it visible. Let's go back to camera properties. And now we can select this point where our focus is set for our camera. So this is um, how I say will become in the play when we start working with the blur and blur going in percent. If we're using just slider, we can go from zero to 100. And you can see on the preview, just leave it. You see how a jagged edge we render, we can access this. But 100% is not a maximum. You can actually just type in like 500, okay? right here you can see 500 and it's become even more so nice things about vu it does not constrain you to specific value that allowed you by slider or uh, go up and down arrows you can also just type in which is very nice and very useful in many cases if you want emphasize this um in comparison if you're going with a, a preset like on cameras you want to f stop of course if your smallest f stop like zero it will be your the widest open if you work before with, with photography or cinematography it's your aperture widest open so it's actually will have it some the highest blur effect with this um and of course it will affect some other elements but overall your f-stop um in some cases you will have it limits because you want this is can be overdone it's in nature probably will never happen that big blur effect but it's meaning in CG in the VU specifically, you can do this if you find this um, useful. Notice also, so right here, now I have a, those extra lines. You see those red lines, horizontal. And this is tell me where the sharpness will happen and where is the blur. So I can know inside the, between these two lanes, it's where my sharpness will object all sharp. And as I'm moving away from here, away from this point, and from this line below, object is start get blurry and blurry and so on. And um, this is what I call depth of field. This is between those two lines, depth of field. Of course, if we take and we increase like 100%, you can see how depth of field now it's way more. 
Okay. Um, in a photography, when you use it, you quite much utilize depth of field. For example, for portraits, you want one. For the um, compositing, when I photo shoot, I want the bigger depth of field. I want everything be sharp and nice. So you can utilize other ones. With a, uh, 3D, you have several options how you can utilize this. The one I said before, you set focal, you set the blur, and you can put it in. Um, also, the depth of field, it will be more in play because right here we have a big distance, actually, if you notice. It is what uh, one meter, so it's quite a bit. But if we make closer, smaller object, our depth field is will shrink, shrink, shrink between and the size. And it makes sense. If you just look right here, you see how big this size. Let me take this focal point right now, and I'll bring closer to camera. See how the distance between these two shrinking, and if we're going to like millimeters or centimeters, they become very very small. So you need to understand the closer camera it is. Um, focal point to the camera, the depth of field range of this range where the sharpness is shrinking as well. So if you want another effect and you don't, you want to say like a hundred percent blur or other things, you just bring objects smaller and bring closer to the camera and then you will have this effect. Okay. Notice what I was doing. I was selecting this point going back and forward. Uh, sometimes it's maybe harder to do this to select and it's adjust your camera. So what you can do, it's a little bit adjustment. You can create some reference object if you want it. And I know some people do this. So example right here is orb. I can put it anywhere I want it on the side usually. And if we're going inside the camera, let's go take our point and focus on, we'll say sphere. So notice right here, our camera, it does not change. Yes. But if I take sphere and I just you see our focal point is changing. So it is kind of a link to the sphere. In some cases, you can easy control it. Well, I put it a little bit off. Okay, let me do this way. So it's kind of will adjust properly for me. Okay, let me uncheck no link in this case. I'll just take this one. And where's my focal point on my camera? Right there. Okay, we'll bring this closer. So I can set actually directly around here. Okay, and now we'll go switch link to the sphere. Okay, and we can get our sphere. Now, notice as I'm moving, it's changing as well. So just keep it in mind. It will adjust the focal link based on the camera, but because it's tied up to the camera, Notice what's happening when I go left and right. It's increased because it will calculate from the camera the positioning. So we don't necessarily will work as well. If you do this way, set on the side and be sure you're going just uh, up and down with this. So it's another kind of little bit hack way to preview with a focal point. Personally, I don't use this. I just like to take directly focal point and from there I just point wherever I need it. So this way I know it's precisely on the target when I need it and use this way. So let's go now look more on the proper suit of the farm camera. We'll look on the focal point. We'll look on a blur focus. It's definitely it will change whatever we set. And you can see right here we set our focus that our focal point is moving. Let's go back to about six, five. So we'll go back right here. So this is our focus point distancing from the camera. Exposure just increase um, how much more light will absorb by the camera. By the way, if you work with camera by default, VU will have it after exposure is enabled. And access these properties, you can just double time click on the main camera or right click and go to edit object. Same way, we'll just open camera properties for the specific selected cameras. Now, right here, after exposure, usually I uncheck because I do like control my own exposure and then uh, or lighting. Otherwise, what's happening if you have it enabled after exposure and you want to have it like total dark, you'll take your sun, put it underground and look what's happening. You start having light coming because it is simulating this after exposure pop up exposure up on your um, render. And if we turn off after exposure, it's become more dark and more sulfur. So you can 
without you can control better lighting on my opinion without after exposure in this case we can set up nicely and you have very good lighting setup easy easy to control so this is one my suggestion for you so after exposure natural film response this is mostly post processing and by the way this is options camera when you finish render you can access these properties and change they don't change your render settings they will change your post render settings so like a curves if you work with the photoshop you'll notice you have it like luminosity curves or saturation curves so this is what does this different reaction like simulate the natural film response or so on so we don't really worry about this you'll notice also on the left side you have it your camera post processing so you have it saying uh pixel expect it, it is related to um, mostly now we work one on one on monitor but older tv like ntc it's have it 0.9 or 1.4 so they have it all these different widescreen or other things just keep it by one focal link here's what we have it you remember i told you about um field of view but this is simulation of focal link so we have 45 millimeters focal link which is about 43.4 of field of view and it's based on about 35 millimeters film we have it also horizontal and vertically field of view there we have it lens abbreviation and lens abbreviations is interesting simulations currently it's a zero but what is lens abbreviation so let's go look uh, right here let me see if i can find best example for you okay let's go down 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 where's my bird so it's what i was saying okay there you go so let's look at these birds yeah and we'll go just to open and sometimes in a sharper you can in a brighter you can see more of this let's go open this in our camera again this is the image it's shot on the camera and what's happening it's light coming to the lens and as the light coming to the lens it will using some diffraction effect it's a start splitting like on a rainbow if you remember sometimes you're down you have that prism lights coming and it's split on the rainbow colors so that when you do with prism you want this effect but problem is it's happened with the lens optical lens in a nature when you don't want it to happen this so and that's what it's meaning if you look closer and you can see okay let me come closer see how cyan right here and purple on the end of the wing right here so it's a shifting and that is what happen on the digital cameras for two reasons one it's maybe lens and the second it will happen also because optic in most cases and right here if you can time see let me pop up saturation and color and you can definitely see see how green and we have it maroon color so this too this is mostly what happened um it may happen by pixelization but not as much as effect of the glass and the lens and that is even happen on very very good glass so it's always will happen and this is what abbreviation when we have it with coloring um it's happening in a natural um lens so in the right here you have an option to simulate this so you can add percentage of this so it will create somewhat similar look same you have it a horizontal vertical film offset it's not just moving your cameras it's actually offset on the pixels up and down left and right and for those who are familiar with uh, uh lenses or with some type like tilt and shift you know you don't necessarily moving you just move lens left right up and down tilt and shift you're kind of adjusting so it's something think about this way also we have a panoramic rendering and all other options all of this you can access in uh, panoramic and other renders you can access in your render options we'll look in a second and of course you have your post-processing and um, on the bottom we have a non-photorealistic render and pair which is same just post-processing this is won't effect non-photorealistic uh, non render one effect you render it just post-processing will supply after this so let's look on the inside render what i said before you have it, your panoramic render in here with the stereoscopic if you enable you can see on your right side um below the resolutions and all this effect okay let's go back now to our properties on the camera 
So we'll look on a focus, we'll look a little bit on exposure. Height, currently it's locked on a camera. It's meaning if we put something under camera, camera will jump on top, what I was meaning by this. Let's go and just create orb and we'll take orb, put it under camera. Right now camera inside. And in some cases you can uncheck uh, camera and camera will go on top of the object. So you can always set this properties if you need it. Um, right here we lock the hour height. So usually I unlock and I adjust by our, um, orthogonal projection. It's a flat projection, so we don't have it really 3D geometrical in this case. So this is kind of all what you need to do. Mostly we worried it's about the blur on the camera and again, a depth of field if you want simulation. So let's look what's going on right here. So here, right here, I uh, rendered before, and you can see this is with a blur zero. This is with a blur 500. And you can notice it is, see how they look on the pyramid. It's look very nice. You can create very nice effect. And of course I over exaggerated in this case, um, but this one image, this one took 10 seconds to render. It's very, very fast. Uh, actually, maybe even below this one, it took about five minutes to render because it's actually having three passes when it was rendered. It's rendered pre pass, it's rendered normal, and after render for the blur for automation. If you're okay with this, it's blur very nice. You can see it's actually very accurate, very clean, but you don't necessarily want need to do this if you want to post process. And this is just suggestion. Uh, so what's meaning when you render, be sure you enable your zap depth like this Z and you can see we have it uh, black and white, just gradients of the um, grayscale. And more far away, it's of course, they will represent as a white color infinity and a black, it's like very close to the camera. So it's just render distance with you and you can render the several options, uh, several ways you can select this. In your render, you can says enable Z depth so it will enable here. And if, of course, if you're doing multi-pass, you can inside multi-pass and select as a properties inside here. Easiest way, probably just enable Z depth. And if you do this, be sure um, you will go inside options. You click Z and you set this because if you save it as your normal image, you will have it alpha map there, but you won't have a Z map. So and we'll look on a second. And if you do this way, you can always go like inside the Photoshop afterwards example, import two of your application. This is your uh, two of your images. This is a, our Z depth and this is our image. We have it and inside Photoshop uh, will say apply to After Effects and other applications. We have it animations. We can um, going control command A, select all, copy, command control C, copy all, go to our other image. Let's go inside the channels, create a new cha uh, new layer. Oops, I don't need a two. I just needed one. Okay, right here I was happy, trigger happy alpha. And we just select the alpha, command control V to paste what we have it. And let's go rename this to the Z. We needed this for our purposes. Now we'll go back to layers. Uh, let's duplicate this layer so we can use it and we're going to filters, blur, lens blur. And in lens blur, we can go inside, select the Z layer on the source and focal distance. We can, uh, let's go increase radius, may make crazy so we can see a lot of blurring. And now we set focus. We can just click on specific area and we'll focus just on this way. So the plus of this technique, because we have a depth map how it's located, we can actually um, set what focal point I want. For example, if I want this one or I want on the back, I click and you can see how it's going. The biggest minus what I found, it is quality of this. Notice what's happening like right here to the top. In some case, you may have this effect. Now, that is maybe also related to because I save in the JPEG format, which have some compression in. And that is compression. It's what jumping out in the blurry. You probably want to save as TFF or other ones. Uh, or if you must save in JPEG, just be sure you save in the highest resolution possible. But this is artifacts, what's happening. And I notice sometimes these artifacts happen even with TFF files. So you will have it some limitation on the quality that you need to work. Of course, if you do this, you have it options to just increase um, maybe curvature 
pop up some other ones to, to reduce and you have some options you can work around this but generally this is what happened when you create um, with a Z map that you're passing in just keep in mind when you render you have it options to do in the camera then you cannot modify truly this because even you have it your Z map but it won't be proper because this is your main image and it's already have it element out of focus or you can do in a post um, so this is one way and how well, let's go back to our camera properties and look so overall you can see how we can set the blur how we can set depth of field and focus inside the view um, I still personally going back and forward you know about uh, do I prefer uh, field of view or I prefer to have a uh, focal link and all that stuff because I do photography uh, a lot <laughs> I kind of used to camera to focus the focal link to aperture kind of working with this but at the same time I done as a lot of 3d so in a uh, field of view can come up more standardized inside the 3d applications so see what you like it but remember that is a relation you can see that focal um, field of view will kind of relate on 35 millimeters film to the um, focal link of the camera about because this is about 45 millimeters right now here okay so this is general over what I want to go look over camera properties and primarily depth of field how to set up a blur how to do this and uh, that is will be just give you additional um, step to create more realistic renders inside the view applications thank you for watching this video if you like it give it thumbs up subscribe put it notification it will help anytime when you subscribe or like it or whatever it's helped this video pop up in so uh, getting a little bit better for me on a YouTube to so other people can find these videos as well and again thank you for your support and especially for my uh, patreon supporters uh, without you uh, this videos <laughs> probably won't be possible at all okay thanks and have a great day to create your art.